You know, I just, but I really appreciate it. And of course, we all appreciate our Seaside Band. Good morning. I'm Reverend Lori Sheets. I'm so glad that you are here. I see so much green. That's absolutely fabulous. I have just a few things to share with you, and then I am off the stage and the real talent comes on. This is when you say, oh no. I thought I had you trained. We have a very dynamic and growing couples club that meets and they have a lot of ideas about what they would like to do. And they are listed in the front page of Inside Seaside. So if you are a couple and if you would like to be part of this group, please take a look at those and choose a couple that you would like to have the club do. And as you take a look, please let Tammy or Vicki, I'm getting my stage crew is, is messing with me. Please let someone from the Couples Club know of your interest, or if you're even willing to host an event. And based on that information, I would like to invite our light bearer today, who is Nancy Washwa, one of our practitioners. Okay. Saturday, March 23rd is our Men's Breakfast Club. Join Seaside's finest men for fabulous food and fellowship, 8 a.m. here. March 24th, which is next Sunday, there is a Conscious Creativity Circle, which is being coordinated by our Seaside sisters and Lynn Adams, and they are looking at ways to repurpose and upcycle things in our environment. And one of the things that they are doing is having a way to create cards to send to someone that you love or to send perhaps to 
uh, someone in the military. Take a look back at the women's table. Take a look, there is a very nice board that shows what's being made next week. Youth and family. Now, just if you think about a lot of youth, what do you, and it's Easter time, so be with me. What are you thinking might be in the mix here? Easter egg hunt. <laughs> exactly. It's that time of the year again. And what we need are, we are looking for stuffings, things to put in the eggs. Now, we've got plenty of candy, so we need to have, like, small toys, small little stickers, maybe a Barbie doll, if you can bend it up enough. <laughs> those types of things. And if you could put those back at the youth ministry table, there is a basket there that we collect. And then on the 27th of March, from 4 to 6, we're having an egg stuffing party. So guess how many eggs we're going to stuff? 500. I have 500. Give me four, give me four, 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 four. I have 500. 500. So we really, really need your help. And if you've ever been told to stuff it, this would be the place to come live that out. <laughs> as far as our classes, please know that our April, um, our spring classes are coming out in April, but we do have a bereavement group that has started and you are more than welcome to be part of if you have experienced the death of a loved one or want to learn about grief and how to get that support. All that information is back on the entertainment, not the entertainment, <laughs> it's back on the education, back on the education table. Seaside Singles, Charades Night, Friday, March 29th, 7 p.m. How many people played charades before? Very good. That's going to be a lot of fun. April, uh, Sunday, April 7th, we have the launch of our Silver, silver Circle. Say that with me because it's hard. Silver Circle. We've begin, begun to look at ways to celebrate the fact that we are 25 years old here at Seaside. So stay tuned for more of that. <laughs> Easter service, the, tw the 31st. Sunrise service, 6 a.m. Be there. Wear a coat, but be there. We have our 9 a.m. We have our 11 a.m. We have a card that is in your program. So please take a look at these. Give them to friends. Pass these around. Put these well, I'm not going to tell you exactly, but put these in a place that people of like mind might be able to be part of, come and be part of our service because we're very excited with a fabulous message and the choir. So I invite you all to be there yourselves. And now stand and greet your neighbor and remain standing. All right, it's time for our congregational song this morning. We're singing together. I'm thankful, so grateful. I trust in God. Enjoy. Thank 
Reggie. Woo! Sounding fabulous this morning. Hey, good morning, Seaside. Oh, what a joy it is to be with you and a happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. You have found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow by being here today at Seaside. It is great to see all the green and all of you that aren't wearing green, if you get pinches from me, don't take it personally. I just, I just can't help it myself. But anyway, hey, welcome to Seaside. Welcome to all of our guests that are here today. Your presence makes a profound difference as to how this morning unfolds. You have found your way into Seaside, a spiritual nexus inspiring people to live their dreams and, and their divinity and to know that Seaside truly is a welcoming place where all are welcome. It is an affirming spirit spiritual community that honors you on your spiritual path and that we are here without judgment with our arms open to greet you to support you it is a community that cares that loves that is kind to one another it is a place where healing goes on and lives are transformed and so your presence adds so much to that and to take us even a little bit deeper into the magic and the wonder of of this day is a powerful practitioner by the name of Robin Mitchell So I just invite you to close your eyes, get comfortable in your seats, and join me going into the stillness with gratitude. So just going into this place where there is spirit anchoring within that, feeling that joy of the sun shining through, knowing this is a blessed day, I give joy and gratitude for this, this service here at Seaside Center for Spiritual Living, knowing that it is filled with a vibrant energy and that each one of us is here and this is our perfect place to be at this time knowing that spirit flows through all the musicians and the singers as they give us that special gift of God, expressing as they do with joy and harmony. Knowing the words that Tammy and Christian speak today are those that are divinely guided from spirit and that everyone's ears are open to hear the perfect message for them. I bless this day, I bless this energy, I bless this love and this peace that is here right now. And so it is. God is real, God is magnificent, God is true, God is love. I am real, I am magnificent, I am true, I am love. We are real. We are magnificent, we are truth, we are love. God is real, God is magnificent. God is true, God is love. Mm -hmm. And that was Rebecca Jade and Reverend Fran leading us in our musical invocation. And as Reverend Christian said, Robin Mitchell as our spiritual practitioner anchoring us in prayer. And I'm Reverend Tammy Mars. It's my joy to welcome you here today. 
to be here with you. I know that that beautiful yes that you said in your heart this morning when you decided to come forth and to give your awareness and your attention to the truth, the truth of God, the truth of life. I know it continues to bless you and fills you as we continue through the rest of this service as these words are the gateway into that good that is ever present. So may you feel and sense and know the presence of God always. Thank you for being here and sharing this day. And if you're a guest, if you're brand new and came as one of our friends, we have a packet for you. It's a welcome packet. It's on our uh, welcome table in the back. It has all kinds of goodies in there for you. It tells you a little bit about who we are, and it has a Science of Mind magazine, and it has coupons for the bookstore and all kinds of fun things. So we invite you to be sure to pick yours up um, on your way out today. Sign our guest registry. We'd love to keep you in contact with all the things that we are doing. So thank you. I also, you know, the, the science of mind and spirit is a teaching that can be applied to almost all faiths. It is a, it's the combination, it's the spiritual application, it's about living those profound teachings. So it's the application of all that wisdom that is found in the ancient wisdom and philosophy and science and religion and, and psychology. And so we teach these principles because they transform lives and they change lives. It opens us and releases those things that no longer serve us. And we want to share with you or bring someone forward today to share with you just that, an example of how this teaching and this center has changed her life. So I'd like to call forward at this time, Samantha. morning, everyone. Whew, okay. Wow. Um, so it was just 10 months ago that I moved to California from New Jersey, having absolutely no idea what was in store for me, other than I was going to get to stay connected uh, with my family, who I love very much. Um, and it was within the first week of being a California girl uh, that my whole life changed. I was sitting on the beach watching my daughter Abigail splash in the ocean, and I got hit with this message that was so deep and profound, unlike anything I'd ever experienced. And it said, now is the time. And that message brought me here to a Sunday morning, at a Sunday morning service at Seaside. And it is here in this amazing, special place that I found home found a community of people that I now call spiritual family and allowed the space for more joy, vitality, growth, unconditional love, and abundance to show up in my life. And now I raise my little daughter, Abigail, you'll meet her later, um, inside the conversation of spiritual connection here at our youth and family ministry. And I live my life as Sammy Sunshine, <laughs> um, who is really a stand for transformational connections, heart-centered connections globally, which I do uh, as a, a consultant and a corporate trainer, both businesses that were only possible out of the healing that took place for me here at this community. Um, and I am forever grateful for the wholeness of Seaside. Thank you. feels good to hear about good news, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So with that, and while our hearts are wide open, why don't we move within in prayer together as we close our eyes to this outside world and we slip into that beautiful place, a place that is warm, that is loving, the place where we have a deep knowing that all is well, that place that wells up within us that is given to us by the Creator itself, which is always there for us as strength right when we need it, is there for us as courage, is there for us as joy and peace and love, is the divine dispenser of abundance, of wholeness and well-being. 
for it is God. God recreated itself and named it you and placed you and me here at this time to express our glory, those wonderful gifts that each of us have been given. I know there can be no separation, for I am that place that God makes manifest. Every ounce of my being is radiating, is the activity of God, and all that is in creation is the activity of God, already indwelled with all good, perfect right action, perfect outcome, and everything necessary. And so it's with this I know that this time right here with our awareness, our consciousness, our whole being focused on that good, something magnificent, something transformational is unfolding. I'm open and I am available for more good than I've ever imagined before. I give great thanks for this moment, this time, this awareness, and for all to come. Let, allow this word as I release it into the law, knowing that it is done, I say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and how are you? You're looking kind of green out there. Not only did I bring a friend from the choir, I... I brought, I brought a lovely friend named Rebecca Jade. Rebecca is helping me today and will help in the future as I need a sub once in a while, as you all know. So isn't it wonderful that she is willing to undertake that? And I'd like to give her the microphone right now and get me out of the way. Go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Fran, and thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your, uh, your Sundays every once in a while. So thank you so much. I just want to take opportunity to, uh, I'm going to be introducing the entertainment for today. Are you guys looking forward to some wonderful music? Yeah. Well, you guys are in for an absolute treat. Um, they play together on Fridays at Inn at the Park. Is that right? All right. You guys ready for some entertainment? We've got Nathan Fry and Janice Edwards. Give them some love, everybody. <laughs> are gonna get easy Ooh, child, things are get brighter Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier Ooh, child, things are get brighter Someday we'll walk in the rays of the beautiful Get it all done. Someday things will get brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get uh, easier. Ooh, 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 child, things will get brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get uh, easier. Thank you. 
Edwards, Nathan Fry, telling us for a little love in our lives. Thank you for that love. Janice and Nathan, fabulous. Love you guys. Woo. Oh man, everything's going to get better, child. That is such a song for Seaside because just the fact that you entered into this space and into this consciousness, you open yourself up for life getting a little bit better, my child. Life is getting better. It is for Seaside. And so I'm going to share with you the end to this wonderful story. You've been hearing about the last few weeks and actually for the last 10 months. And that is the story about the bank wanting Seaside to give them all the money that we said we would give them at the end of the loan and the balloon that came due. And, ah! <clears throat> you know, it's like, you know, 2.7 million they wanted. And, um, and the land isn't quite appraising, as you know. And so what we started doing a year ago is figuring out what we could do. And we found this fabulous company that works with churches that creates bonds. Tammy started gathering that information. Reverend Tammy sent the information off to the bond company in May. We started doing the things they required. The generosity poured in from this community. And we met by the end of 2012 those financial requirements that then put us in a position to have an outside audit for three years. My goodness, that was an experience for Reverend Tammy. I was fine with it. <laughs> Then we went through all the requests and requirements for the federal uh, public offering of the bonds. And then, as you heard last week, we were coming into the signing, which took place on Monday. Which was, oh, there we go. The bonds went to the market on Wednesday for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they sold out Wednesday morning. All the bonds got publicly offered. And so... I am happy to tell you we are done with closing this chapter in Seaside's life and we are back on about the spiritual business. It is about creating miracles in our lives continuously in those areas that matter. And for that to happen, it requires us taking a fresh look at an experience that may not look like it's got the answer we're looking for. I mean, in the last few days, I've been up um, skiing with my family in Mammoth. It has been uh, just glorious. But when we got there in the late afternoon, I asked somebody coming off the mountain, how's the snow? And they said, oh, you know, it's 60 degrees out here. It's slushy and sticky. Not very good. And then the next morning, we're going up onto the slope. I asked the people, you know, how is it out there? They said, it is icy as hard as it gets. It's terrible. <laughs> but I want you to know, between 9 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock, the snow was ideal. It softened up, didn't get too soft. And it was glorious skiing. And so what happens is there is another perspective, which I want to call the third way or the third side. And I'd like to say I made it up, but I actually stole it from a guy by the name of William Urey. And he is um, the co-founder of Harvard's uh, negotiation program. He is a senior fellow of the Harvard Negotiation Project, wrote the uh, book, uh, How to Say No and Get Yes, and um, Agreement Without Losing. Uh, that sold 8 million copies, 30 languages, significant guy, helped us put together the Abraham Project, you know, when we took that trek on Abraham's land through Syria, Jordan, Turkey, and into Israel, you know, he, he was there. What he talked about was in a conflict, you, what you want to do is work on the ideals and the conversation and not get the personalities involved because as soon as you begin to take sides, you have polarization and people become defensive and attacked. What you want to do is have an authentic conversation about the issues that are at hand because conflict is natural and it is a normal path to resolution. And it is a natural way to deal with the injustices that are there. And he says you've got to take the third side or the third way. The way in which you didn't quite expect. The bank said you've got to do this. We said we've got to do it this way. And what happened was there was a third way. What happens in our life when you know everything's going to be all right, my child? You know, when you know things are going to be good, I'm willing to let go of my position and know that there is a third side here, a God side, a God wave that will take me to a place. And I've got to trust that and realize that if I don't know where I'm going, going faster to not knowing where I'm going, it's not going to get me there. I've got to open up to God's way. 
And if there's an issue, I got to remember to call forth God in that presence. And if an issue seems too small to care for prayer, then it's too small for burdens. Okay? If the care is too small for prayer, it's too small for your burdens. And I got to assure you, as you do this thing called life, you will be, your courage will be tested. This is what Irma Bombeck says anyways, that your courage will be tested in life like when you take your children into a house with white carpet. You know, <laughs> you know when we take our 13-year-old Trevor into a house and leave him alone in a meticulously perfect room and know that he has a rascalness and a curiosity about him that we get to deal with uh, later on. It, it tests courage and it, it tests our faith. Joni Mitchell said, I, I don't know who I am, but I know that I'm in here in life to learn. And that's the third way. I may think I'm this, or this person may think I'm that, but you know what? There's a third way, a third perspective here. And as I begin to open up to that third perspective and to that third way, spirit begins to show up. But we get so rigid in our, our perspective. I, mean, I remember reading this book to Trevor. It's a Dr. Seuss story called The Zacks. Any moms, parents, dads remember that? The Zacks. Okay, that was a pretty good one. You know, it's about the, the, the prairie, of, prairie of Pax where you had two Zacks that were one was a south-going Zack and one was a north-going Zack until they ran into each other face-to-face -face, and neither one was willing to budge. So they sat there foot-to-foot -foot and head-to-head -head, and the south-going Zacks, I will never change my way and the north-going Zack said, I'm gonna, never going to change my way and I'm a south-going Zacks, I'm not going to move for 59 days and so it said, and I'll prove to you, yelled the south-going Zacks, that I can stand here in the prairie of Prax for 59 years, for I live by a rule that I learned in my boyhood south-going school. Uh, never budge, that's my rule. Never budge in the least. Not an inch to the west and not an inch to the east. I'll stay here not budging. I can and I will if it makes you and me and the whole world stand still. But as we know, the world will never stand still. And so as they stood still, they built highways and cities and cars around them. <laughs> as we try to stand still and forget that there is a new way, a God way, a third way, a third possibility, you begin to make yourself available to that way to emerge beyond your position and standing still face to face. But you've got to be willing to open up and take responsibility that there could be something else. There's a saying that each snowflake in an avalanche pleads, not guilty. <laughs> they want to say, hey, I'm not involved here. But I am. But what we've got to do is create space in your life, in your world, in your thinking. If you want that third way or that third side or the God perspective to show up. You know, and this is a great time of the year for spring cleaning. Is it not? This is the time to create space. For what? Well, you don't have to know for what. It's a time to create space. Spring cleaning. I, uh, in my foundation class, I always give the assignment to go home, clear out your drawers, clean out your closets, clean out the garage, and I go, oh, like it's a big deal. You know, you want to do that to create the space. I had one student in my class say that, you know, what she does every now and then is she goes into her dresser drawers and gets rid of all the low self-esteem underwear that's in there. <laughs> you know, the stuff that is faded, frayed, and stretched out. <clears throat> so what do you need to get rid of in your life that is faded and frayed? You know, where have you overstretched in your life? that you can begin to create the space for this third way to show up, something new in your world, in your life. Because I'll tell you what, this logical mind's not gonna wanna just create space for space reasons. You know, you try to reason with that which is supposed to reason, but it doesn't reason because it wants to know. But if you want healing in your life, you've gotta be willing to create the space for spirit to show up beyond the ways in which you know can heal. Because people oftentimes are stuck in their pain or their physical pain. And sometimes it's illogical for the way the healing takes place, but the mind 
cannot heal that which involves the heart and the soul and the spirit. That part of your heart that feels as if it has been victimized, rationalizing yourself through that doesn't always work. You've got to be willing to open up to the presence of God and realize that history can be altered, but it can't be halted. That's, yeah, I like that. I didn't get out clear. First service didn't get it, but I like that. <laughs> history can be altered, but it can't be halted. I mean, history is moving. Life is unfolding. Things are happening, and you can alter perception, direction, but you can't stop the energy. You can't stop the wave that is coming, but you can begin to alter and dance with it and, and be with it in a different way. And how do you do that? is you begin to turn within, and you, you feel that presence, and be allow those words of God to fill your mind. Now, that, 12th proverb verse 8 it talks about words it says thoughtless words can create as much wound as any sword but wisely spoken words can heal they can heal anything but you have the space for that new perspective for healing to show up or are you busy with your logical mind having to figure out this is how it has to show up. Because meditation is about connecting with that, that voice, that, that, that wise voice, that spirit, and not with an expectation, because a lot of times people go with, to their meditation with this expectation, this is what I expect to get, this is what I want to get, and that's not meditation, or that's not an open space for spirit to deposit its new insights for you. And that which you're trying to get is what you're keeping away by trying to get it, but by going to spirit in a quiet way and being that space where spirit can deposit its, its wisdom, you become receptive to a new way, a God way. You're not on the south, you're not on the north. You're not on this pole, you're not on that pole. I don't have my position or your position, the bank position or this position. There's a third way here, a God way, and I have got to clean out the drawers of my consciousness and create the space so spirit can deliver a new perspective, a new sight. Then I can speak from there. Plato said that it's the wise who speak only when they have something to say. The foolish speak because they want to say something. <laughs> oh, right. You know. So what can I do to be in that place of spirit? Because when I'm in that place, I'm happy. And being in that happy place is a natural state of being. And it doesn't mean there aren't problems. It doesn't mean I'm not challenged. It just means I'm able to deal with that. The happiest people are not ones that don't have problems. They just know how to deal with it. They know how to create the space for the third way, the third side, the God perspective to show up, to lead them through those times that are difficult or the challenge that is there. Norman Vincent Peale tells the story when he first went to New York and he was talking with a teacher or someone said, I just wish I could find a place where there weren't the problems. You know, where there was the peace and there wasn't the anxiety and everything was just, oh, fine. And the teacher said, I'll show you. Come on with me. There is a place. And he took him to the cemetery and said, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Happiness doesn't mean there aren't conflicts. Those are the natural evolution if you do not personalize it or need to defend your position, but you're willing to be open to something greater that is emerging here. There is something that wants to emerge. And, and what is it? Are you open and available to those crazy ideas? There was a, a guy by the name of Richard Gautier. He was visiting his mom in the hospital. She had cancer. And so every day he, he and his family would go visit mom who had cancer and was dealing with that. And one day they were walking down the hallway and, um, and he heard crying out of one of the rooms, a, a lady just screaming out in pain, writhing in, in pain, help me, help me, I have pain. And his wife and his six-year-old continued you know, walking to see the mom. And he stopped by the door of the room with his little one-year-old girl in his arm and kind of looked in. And there was this old lady in bed, white hair, just clenching her fists, rocking back and forth, sitting up, eyes closed, just say, help me, help me, I'm in pain. And he looked around and he didn't see any nurse coming in, didn't know if this is something you know, she always does. And so something inside him clicked and said, you know what? Maybe if I let her hold my little girl. 
And then all of a sudden the logical mind clicks in. I can't do that. I mean, what happens if she's got some disease that my kid catches or I catch and we die? Or, or what happens if we startle her and she has a heart attack? Or, and all of a sudden the logical mind says, you know, what are you doing? But in the meantime, he's walking in there with his little girl and no nurse comes in. And so he places just gently on the bed his little one-year-old girl. And he says to the lady who's just rocking in pain, eyes against, there's a little baby girl in front of you. And she opens her eyes and sees this little girl. And instantly... The pain stops. Her face of agony turns into one of joy. And the tears that were rolling down her face just subside. And she says, what a beautiful little girl. It's as if she was the little girl on a holiday morning opening up the gift surprise of her life. And it's like, this is the grace. What a beautiful little girl. What a gorgeous little baby. Oh, and just, just hugging it. And all of a sudden, there was a transformation. The third side. There was something beyond pain meds, and pain. There was an instant healing. And that's what I want to remind us is that there's leave the space for an instant transformation for your life and your world that is beyond what it is you think it is. Because if you go to your meditation prayers, this is what I want. You're not going in with a receptive open space to hear the third perspective, which is the God perspective. And when you do that, your world shows it. Your life shows it. Remember that movie when Harry met Sally and they're sitting in the restaurant and Meg Ryan is just like faking this orgasm <clears throat> and at the table next to her, a lady turns to the waitress and says, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> Does your world look so good that the people around you are saying, I want what she has. I want what he has going on in his life. Let your world look so good that people will see you and say, what is it? What is that spiritual food that you are partaking in? I want some of that in my life. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, if a detective came in here and they were going to arrest all us uh, spiritual folks and, and they were going to arrest you for being a good religious scientist, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Does your life look so good because you're continuously opening up to the greater vision that spirit has? It's not that there won't be conflict, but what is it you do with that conflict? You know, I like, you know, the Jamaican. No problem, man. <laughs> you know, be happy. No worries. I like the one here. No sweat. I had someone recently say, no drama. No drama. Well, what's that? I mean, you know, with drama, you know, it's, it's, you know, you got your good guys and your bad guys, right? And if you are a good guy or you want to be a good guy, you got to create bad guys in your world so you can have those two sides going on. Or victim, you know, you know the, the bad guy's got to be stronger than the, you know, the weak underdog, and so you got to have people victimize you if you want to be the victim and perpetuate your story that is going on. Or... You know, drama, you know, there's always tension, right? You don't know how it's going to end. There's suspense there. You know, I'm going to tell you up front how it ends. Everything's going to be all right, my child. It's all going to work out. may not work out exactly how you wanted it to work out, but it's going to work out. You know, Esther Hicks said, um, uh, just because you shine in drama doesn't mean you have to have drama to shine. No. Yeah. You don't need to have the drama going on in your world. You know, there's people who love drama. Let them have it. You know, you got your drama queens or kings that are out there that just got an intense drama, and that's what they do is drama. And that's what they're always going to do. You know, you got those who do moderate drama, and they always do moderate drama. And there's a consistency here with these folks. And it's not because it is the luck of the stars that have lined up. It is because there is a consciousness that has filled the drawers with this state of drama consciousness. You've got to clean out those drawers. You've got to open yourself up and be receptive to that God perspective that is there. You know, it's, um, it's as you open up to that God perspective, it gets you closer. Ernest Holmes, he's the founder of religious science. He said, as one spiritually evolves, you don't become more distant 
to God. You become more intimate. That's how you know if it's working. It's not like the conflict goes away. It's that you have the courage and you trust walking into that house with white carpets with your kids and knowing it's going to be okay. You, no, <laughs> we're not doing that one. Okay. Um, yeah. It's just things work out. There, there was a, a security guard in a nice boutique store who noticed this older lady who's not typical look of their clientele. And, um, you know, she had old shoes, scuffed up heels, a little run in her stocking, uh, or a crinkled nylon black 15-year-old um, dress, scraggly hair, outdated bag, and, and he knew this wasn't a clientele. He asked, what can I do? Is there anything? He said, well, I, I'm looking uh, to buy a dress. And he said, okay. So he called over the sales clerk because really their policy was to move these individuals that don't really look like the typical clientele out, you know, take care of them and out as swiftly as possible. And the, so the sales clerk said, hey, oh, may I help you? And she was so proud. She said that uh, my granddaughter, my only granddaughter is getting married and I want to get a full wedding outfit for her. And so the sales clerk said, oh, you probably need a bridal consultant. Let me help you and moved her into the back room with the bridal consultant. And the room is just filled with all these gorgeous gowns uh, for the family and the brides. And, and uh, the bridal consultant asked the sales clerk, you know, what was going on. And she said she's looking for a whole wedding outfit. And she kind of chuckled and, and walked out. So the bridal consultant sat her down at the desk, said, okay, let's cut to the chase. How much do you have to spend on this wedding outfit. And she said, well, uh, when my granddaughter announced that she was getting married last summer, for nine months I've been saving my money. And my granddaughter Annie, she sent me an uh, airlines ticket. So I have all the money I saved to spend on a, a beautiful outfit w with matching shoes and, and handbag. And she pulled the envelope out of her uh, purse and said, I have about $70 here. He said, you wanna count it? She took it and said, $72 here. You know what? I think you need to go down to the thrift store. You probably can get something there for that. And uh, the lady said, well, I was down there, and they sent me up here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what this little staunt, gaunt, haunty, model-like uh, bridal clerk <clears throat> said, my friend down there, she's playing jokes on me. What's she doing? And as she's thinking this, this older lady, you know, she gets up, the grandma gets up and she walks over to this beautiful powder blue dress, just elegant. And, and it, with a jacket, long sleeve, a little f f lace on the end. She said, this is it. And she holds it up in the mirror. It looks so beautiful. It's plain, but elegant. And I've, of course, got to have matching shoes to go with this. And uh, she's swirling it around inside this bridal. It's just, she felt mixed emotions. She felt the frustration, the sympathy, the anger. I mean, how is she going to tell this lady that it's 300, at least $300 just for the dress alone, let alone the shoes, when in the room was this young bride-to-be, beautifully dressed, picking up her specially created veil that cost far more than that dress, for her wedding next week, and she saw what was going on. She called that bridal clerk over and said, I'll tell you what, you know, my family is well off, and they told me I could spend whatever I want on this wedding. Would you just let her have whatever she wants and have her just put it on my bill? And uh, maybe just charge her $50, tell her it was on sale so you can save her pride and leave her some spending money. And the bridal clerk said, why do you want to do that? She said, well, I never had a chance to meet either one of my grandmothers. And so on my wedding day, when I'm walking down the aisle, I want to remember that grandmother as my grandmother also on that day. There's always another way. You think it's got to be this way. No, they say it's got to be this way. But there is a God way that you have to be open to if you want it to show up in your life and in your world. Because if you go to God for the prayers and the meditation with what it is you want, you're shutting down an infinite realm of possibilities. Because what I have come to discover is as I open up to the God way or that third way, what I've come to discover is that divine perspective is far greater than I could ever have conjured up with my logical reasoning mind trying to figure out how to make it happen in my life. Spirit's plans are far greater than I could ever create, but I've got to open up. You know, 
clenched fists, they, they can't shake hands. You know, you, your arms are crossed, you can't hug. You've got to be open to be able to receive that presence of God in your life. There is always another way when you think your back is up against the wall and you don't feel there's much possibility. There is always something more to be known in this situation that is seeking to express itself through you, but you've got to make the space for that third way to show up in your life. And so my challenge for you is to go home, create some space, and go to God just for God and be receptive to what's your greater good, and you will open up your eyes like a holiday morning with the greatest gift that you could ever have expected, and the transformation you will experience is profound because everything is going to be all right, my child. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring back to the stage Janice and Nathan. sunshine of my life, yeah, that's why I'll always be around, you are the apple of my eye, forever you'll stay in my heart, I feel like
love you, Seaside. Janice and yeah, Nathan. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Woo. Oh, my, oh, my. Great job, you two. Oh, well, it sounds. Uh, hey, just another typical day at Seaside. Oh, it is. What a wonderful, wonderful community all of you have created. Together we create the magic that is here. Together we support the wonder that is this community that is Seaside. So when people walk in this door, they say, wow, there's a presence here that is just divine. It is magical. Life gets better when you begin to just be in the space of deep knowingness. Your life begins to show what it is you believe, that you hold true in your heart. And so this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness to support the community, but in truth it is supporting spirit, which is showing up as this community in our life at this time. And you play an important part of this family, and so I thank you for that up front from the fullness of my heart. And this is the time of our service where we have an opportunity to support that in a financial way because we operate within the community that exchanges energy in the financial kind of way. And so as you give... It comes back. Whatever it is you give is what comes back to you multiplied. And so you get to be the activity that Spirit is having as your life at the level of your choice. So listen to your heart and say yes. Just as that guy said yes to bring his child in there and created a miracle, say yes to what's stirring in your soul. I want to invite our ushers to come forward, our greeters uh, at this time, and say thank you to this green crew of, of leprechauns that are blessing us with their feistiness and Oh my, and thank you to those that mail in your contributions when you can't be here on a Sunday. And those that remember us with the auto tithe, that regular systematic support from your world into ours. And to those who are watching us live streaming today, hello, we love you and thank you for your support. And all of us together make a difference. And so I offer this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that the blessings of the divine unfolds in this moment in ever-increasing kinds of ways. For the fullness of spirit is forever seeking expression. And what I know right now is this, this, that this is an opening vortex of the abundant good that flows through each and every one. For the blessings of God and the grace of God is upon this moment in ways that enrich our individual lives. And I say thank you for this kind of knowingness, this kind of experience, and this kind of opportunity to to share that which has blessed my individual lives, knowing that that ripples out into the world, continually blessing all those with whom it comes in contact. And so it is. Amen. And together, let us say our affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now.
And so as I stand before this bountiful blessing of joy and love and music and contributions, I know right now that the fullness of God is expressed through each and every one of us for the richness of spirit that has graced our individual lives, pours forth into a collective kind of ways, and this bountiful good is taken care of with good stewardship, and it is assimilated and sent forth into the world that blesses all those with whom it comes in contact. It feels good to be part of a growing, thriving spiritual community where all are contributors, and so it is. Amen. Thank you, Trudy, your board president that helped guide us through this uh, renegotiation time. So thank you. <laughs> Guys in the band, you are fabulous. So oh, my. Nathan and Janice, you two are what a gift. Listen to that. We love you so much. And Katie Perry, oh my. How fun, uh, how fun. Thank you for your wonderful taking care of us in our musical expression and for bringing us Rebecca J. Bless you for your musical guidance here this morning. <laughs> Reverend Tammy, always a joy to share Sunday mornings with you. You're a blessing to us all for sure. Hey, thank you, Ed, for giving us sound. Thank you, Marv, for giving us the visuals. Appreciate you. And know that there's a CD available right after the service. And um, thank you, Tim, for sharing this uh, live with the world. We have viewers from around the planet because of uh, what you're doing and because of what is going on in here. And so big news is Easter is coming. We have an early sunrise service at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And I gave each of you two invitations to Easter. So what I'd like to ask you is to share these two invitations with somebody you know and somebody you love for a magical spiritual experience that's going to be taking place here. And... Um, well, I could tell you about, but you know, Marv, you've got a, I got a clip. Here's a, it's 90 seconds telling you about Easter. It all begins here, March 31st, 6 a.m. for the sunrise service at Seaside. It is going to be a magical moment where the choir is singing and the moon is setting and the sun is rising and the birds are singing. We're even going to release 20 white doves to the heavens on that morning as we release whatever challenges we might be having in our world. And I'll tell you what, at 9 and 11, we'll be going into the sanctuary where Carl Anthony will be rocking the house with his fantastic music. Well, I would like to see a simple loving mortal man. If you will, I'd like to think, to think that maybe so I am. But have I become what I The choir is going to be singing. There's going to be processionals of practitioners and ministers, brass bands. Even our children are going to have an Easter egg hunt. And I'll tell you what, I'm also going to give you the keys to rising triumphant above any of the challenges that have you entombed or entrapped in your life. So come on out, March 31st, and I will give you the answers then. <laughs> so there you go. Tell you what, share that video with your friends, like it on the Facebook, pass it around. Let's have our wonderful community feel. Hey guys, how'd it go today? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah. Hey, I like your green. That's nice. Yeah. Happy birthday, Christian! That would be me. Thank you, guys. That is just so, so fun. Bless you. Oh, thank you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christian. Thanks, guys. I guess we'll have cake. Uh, 
I'll pray us real quick. Stay standing. It's with a sense of joy and expectation that the divine unfolds in this moment of celebration, feeling that glorious spirit having its way and having space for spirit to have its new way in our individual lives. I know that there's healing going on, transformation unfolding, for truly the blessings of spirit is upon this moment. So I let go of my will and my desire and open up to that third wave, that God wave for the healing to take place in my life. So if there's anything less than the grace of spirit operating as my experience, I let it go and open up to that higher aspect of who I am, who each of us is, and allow that to have its way. So grateful to know the abundant good, the health, the wholeness, the ease, the fulfillment and success are our experience now. I send this forth with love and appreciation and gratitude and an unshakable courage and conviction that our good is so in this moment because all is going to be all right, my child. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient practice healthy and mature communication. Together, I practice healthy, mature communication. Again, I practice healthy and mature communication. One more time. I practice healthy and mature communication in our song of grace. We honor all truth as together we 